Of course, you didn't like it. Anywhere in the world. <clears throat> Never. I have a house at the beach, and I was sitting out there last night watching it come in. <laughs> yeah. And watching part of my deck. Go out. Go out. <laughs> There's nothing you can do. You sit there and say, holy. You know what? <laughs> you know what? And it hit, it would hit the windows, and all of a sudden, I'd just see boards just be peeled off and mm. carried out. Deck chairs were going by on the ocean, these huge pilings, patio furniture, lattices. It was just full of debris. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you watch the news, that's all you see. And you think, any moment, it's, it's going to go. My steps are gone. I can step off my deck, and it's 10 feet to the sand. <laughs> Straight down, and the, two days ago, the sand was one foot from the deck. So mm -hmm. nine feet of sand has been taken around the beach. Oh, boy. Anyway, we'll see what happens tonight. High tide is at 11.30. Yeah. So On that uh, cheery note, let's give them a real funny show. <laughs> <laughs> sure, you're in town. <laughs> Easy. Sure, easy for you. You're in town sitting in your wine cellar. Is it over yet, Victoria? <laughs> Is the water coming in? <laughs> Last Monday night, apparently, MASH, the concluding two and a half hour episode, got the highest rating ever of any television show. Uh, and it probably will stand for a long time. And I've said this before, it was probably one of the best shows ever on television. It set a standard in writing and performance mm -hmm. and among the people. It was going to be hard to touch. And uh, it showed what happened to the personnel of the 404,000, or 4077, right? As the war ended. What it didn't show, what they did not do, yes. <laughs> would show what became of Hawkeye, BJ, and the whole gang after the war. Right. So tonight... As a as public it, service. No. No. <laughs> no, as a tribute. Oh, a tribute. To MASH. <laughs> We'd like you to take a look and see what happens to the characters in the succeeding years. Have we set this up? Yes. Our salute to MASH. A lot of money on production, folks. <laughs> A lot of people, you see, would just hold up the cards. Not us. We Not bring the music right in. Nice. <laughs> Two weeks after the war ended, Hawkeye got off the troop ship wearing his Groucho disguise as a joke. He was mugged at the bottom of the gangplank by Aaron Fleming. A lot of people don't... <laughs> Not really true. These are jokes. <laughs> after the war, Captain B.J. Honeycutt makes a living by stealing a helmet from a military policeman and going door-to-door -door as a freelance men's room attendant known as Mr. Potty. <laughs> <laughs> Is music still there? Okay. <laughs> Colonel Potter moves to New York City, becomes very wealthy by performing plastic surgery on cab drivers who want to enlarge their fingers. <laughs> music up. Music up. <laughs> If the joke doesn't seem to go, Bob, in the yeah. booth, bring the music and let it ride right over the top of the <laughs> When he returns to the States, Hawkeye announces to his old friend Radar that he has made the ultimate commitment to the feminist movement. He has gotten himself pregnant. <laughs> Corporal Max Klinger moves back to his beloved hometown in Ohio, where he opens a gay bar and introduces a new drink to replace the pink lady, the Toledo Tootsie. <laughs> Several years later, traumatized by his combat experience, Corporal Radar O'Reilly moves back to his parents' farm in Iowa and commits suicide by wrapping himself in a red towel and flashing a bull. <laughs> In 1956, several members of the 477th get together as a lounge jack at a new hotel in Las Vegas designed especially for doctors, Caesar's Bedpan. <laughs> music's great, isn't it? <laughs> when the unit pulls out of Korea in 1953, as a practical joke, they put an Okupado sign on the camp latrine, and Father Mokehi patiently waits for 28 years. <laughs> before he gives up and goes to look for a Texaco station. <laughs> In the late
late 60s, B.J. divorces his wife and moves to Venice Beach. <laughs> where he opens up an alternative lifestyle gymnasium. Here you see him cleaning and jerking Colonel Potter. <laughs> In 1963, at their 10th reunion, veterans of the 477th gathered together to sing Hail, Hail, the gang's all here. Hot Lips Houlihan gets so excited at the mention of the word gang that the reunion lasts too, too, too much. <laughs> Sean, as he thinks he's still featured tonight. <laughs> This is marginal. <laughs> you folks be the judge. Colonel Potter is transferred back to cavalry headquarters at the Pentagon. Tragically, in 1957, at the office Christmas party, the colonel is crushed to death when he asks his horse secretary, pictured here, to sit on his lap. Music up. Here, all the veterans of the 477th Mass who have shown us two things. First, how human beings can maintain dignity under the terrible pressures of war. And second, how human beings can make 10 million bucks in TV reruns. <laughs> Our salute to Mash. <laughs> Music sometimes aids uh, yes. a piece of comedy material, no. doesn't it? First time we've done that, I think. We'll see a lot more of that. <laughs> well, it's nice. It's a, it's a haunting song. It kind of lives with you. It's What's nice. the name of that? Suicide Through. What? Suicide is Painless. Suicide is Painless. Good song. Who wrote that? John Mandel. John Mandel? Good song, isn't it? Yeah. Catchy. Certainly works for this bit. <laughs> Suicide is Painless. <laughs> 